So in the previous video, we drew this Gantt chart or cascade diagram uh, based on this activity network. In this video, I want to introduce you to what's referred to as a resource histogram. So essentially, it takes the Gantt chart or the cascade diagram and it then starts to allocate when activities need to take place or when they should take place. Uh, and try to fit it in so we have a, as few workers working on the project as possible. Okay, because obviously we don't want to have an unnecessary amount of workers on the project. Um, so how do we do that? Well, essentially we play Tetris. So if you've heard of the game Tetris, it's kind of similar to that. The resource histogram uh, so, now moving on to the resource histogram. So that's that one. And now we're going to draw the resource histogram. So the resource histogram looks very similar to this, except it does actually have a vertical axis as well. So we're still going to have zero... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So we're still going to have that. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. So we've got a time axis. And up here, we're going to have number of workers. So this is essentially your number of workers axis. Now, what we're going to do in this problem is assume that each activity only requires one worker. Uh, if that wasn't the case, then you would have to um, have boxes that are twice as large if it takes two workers, uh, or if they take three workers, etc. So it becomes a bit more of a fiddly problem when certain activities require more than one worker. Um, so, I'm going to assume that own, each activity only takes one worker, and um, when an activity is done, uh, they can be, the worker can move immediately onto the next activity. So there's no change over time. Okay, so let's put that as one worker. Put that up a little bit further. Two workers. Okay, let's see if we need any more than that. So, uh, first of all, you put in your critical path. So this row drops down, and I could just put that in immediately. So I've got A going up to 4. We've got C going up to 9. Oops, missed that. C. Uh, then we've got E going up to 12. then F to 14, and then H up to 16. Okay, so that goes down. Then, these activities, actually, the way that they are, they can just drop immediately into place, one after the other, if they all take on their earliest start time. So activity B can drop down, and that's going between 4 and 7. So 4 and 7, and try and draw that a little bit neater. I don't know if I achieved. <laughs> okay, so that's B, 4 and 7. Then D can drop immediately down next to it, and that takes us up to 9. And G can drop down right next to it, and that takes us up to 12. Like so. So this time, okay, that we've got here, that worker's not being used. Now, follow the directions that the exam paper gives you. It might ask you to shade those regions out. 
or it might just ask you to leave them blank. Okay, really depends on what the exam question is asking. So this is the resource histogram that goes with this cascade diagram. Okay, now sometimes, you know, this was a very easy one to do. Sometimes this can be more fiddly, okay, um, in trying to uh, put the bars in the correct place to minimize the number of workers possible. Okay, so it does take some playing around in some scenarios. Um, I would definitely have a, an eraser ready uh, and just do this in pencil, just in case uh, you make an early mistake. Okay, but that's how you can construct a resource histogram.